in this video, we are going to look at how Muhammad disobeyed the Quran by engaging in sexual activity with his wives during their monthly period. But stay tuned to the end because after that, we are going to see that Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. In Surah chapter 2, verses 222, we read this. Keep away from women during their menstrual periods and do not approach them until they are clean again. So that passage of the Quran makes it very clear that Allah prohibited men from coming near their wives or other women during their monthly period. However, when we read the hadiths, we can see very clearly that Muhammad disobeyed this command and he engaged in sexual activities with his wives during their monthly period. Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith 299, narrated by Aisha. The Prophet and I used to take a bath from a single pot while we were Janab. During my period, he used to order me to put on a dress below the waist and used to fondle me. So this hadith makes it very clear that during Aisha's monthly period, Muhammad would get into a bath with her and would make her put a dress on and would fondle her in the genital areas in complete contradiction and complete disobedience to what God supposedly said in the Quran. Now imagine this situation for a moment. Muhammad is in the bath with a woman who is having her monthly period. Can you imagine the blood in the bath. This is just disgusting. But there are many other hadiths which say the same thing. Let me read to you another hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith 302. Aisha said, whenever Allah's messenger wanted to fondle any one of us during her periods, he used to order her to put on a dress and start fondling her. Aisha added, none of you could control his sexual desires as the Prophet could. So here we have another hadith supporting the previous hadith. So we can know for sure this is not an isolated report. But look at this hadith. It wasn't only with Aisha that he did this kind of thing. It was with his other wives as well. And apparently nobody could control their sexual desires like Muhammad could. Now let's be serious about this. How many of us can control ourselves sexually if our wives are having their period? I think every single one of us would have no problems controlling ourselves for that short brief period of time. So why is it that Muhammad is supposedly greater at controlling himself when he couldn't even control himself during his wife's monthly periods? And remember, he had other wives he could go to, so I can't imagine they were all having their monthly period at the same time. But let's keep reading other hadiths to support the same hadith claims that these ones have made. Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith 298. While I was laying with the Prophet under a single woolen sheet, I got my period. I slipped away and put my clothes on for menzies. He said, have you got your period? I replied, yes. He then called me and made me lie with him under the same sheet. So here we have another Hadith where Aisha is having her period and Muhammad knows about it and yet he still calls her to come back into the bed with him and lie under the sheets. Now let's read in between the lines here. It's pretty clear that it was the intention of Muhammad to have sex with her in the bed. That's what he was wanting to do, come and lie with me. So it's very clear in this hadith that Muhammad actually had sex with Aisha during her monthly period. This kind of thing is just not only disgusting, but it's actually a contradiction and a disobedience of the commands given by Allah in the Quran. So it's very clear that Muhammad disobeyed the Quran by engaging in sexual activities with his wives during their monthly periods. But not only that, Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. Let me read to you a number of hadiths to prove that she was prepubescent when Muhammad consummated the marriage when she was nine years old. Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith 6130. I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. 
When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. The playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl not yet reached the age of puberty. Now notice this first hadith. This is just before their marriage. The Prophet would come and visit Aisha and she was playing with little dolls. And the reason why she was playing with little dolls is because she was prepubescent. Otherwise, playing with dolls was forbidden in Islam. Now let me read to you another hadith and you see that she was still playing with dolls the time that the marriage was consummated. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith 1422. Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old and he was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine and her dolls were with her. So this hadith makes it very clear that Muhammad married Aisha when she was nine years old and she still had her dolls with her. And the previous hadith tells us that the reason why she had her dolls was because she was a prepubescent little girl. Otherwise, the playing with dolls is prohibited in Islam and is still prohibited to this day. But not only that, Muhammad was 52 years old when he had sex with Aisha, the nine-year-old prepubescent little girl. Let's look at that. Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith 5134, narrated by Aisha, that the Prophet married her when she was six years old and he consummated his marriage with her when she was nine years old. Hisham said, I have been informed that Aisha remained with the Prophet for nine years until his death. Now Muhammad died at the age of 61, which means if Aisha was with him for nine years after the marriage was consummated, he was 52 years old when he consummated his marriage with a prepubescent nine-year-old little girl. This is atrocious. Now, you might be looking at all this and wondering, why do Muslims record all this information? Why is it that Muslims record this sexual behavior of Muhammad in the Hadith literature? Why? Why? The reason why is because the Quran says that Muhammad is the perfect example for all people. And they use these Hadiths to justify their own actions. If Muhammad did it, then it's okay for them to do it. Let me read to you this passage of the Quran. Surah 33, verse 21. Indeed, in the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, you have a good example to follow for him who hopes in the meeting with Allah and the last day and remembers Allah much. Can you imagine a 52-year-old man forcing himself onto a little nine-year-old girl who hasn't even had her period yet? What would this little girl be thinking? What kind of trauma would she go through? And what would this 52-year-old man be thinking as he's parting the legs of this little girl? This is atrocious kind of behavior. No respectable person should do it. And no respectable person should look at a man who does such things as though he is a prophet of God. This kind of behavior is atrocious and shameful. And every Muslim who believes it should be ashamed of themselves. Clearly, the Quran is false. Muhammad is a false prophet.